Well, good morning, everyone. Come on over. Come on, find your spot. We have a lovely morning out here. That breeze is gorgeous. We just hope that these tents don't fly away. So if there happens to be a fly, don't worry. We'll just catch them before they hit the road. My name is Pastor Rachel and we want to welcome you to service this morning. If you're joining us online, well, welcome. And we hope you are able to tune in with us, whether it's from your cottage or your home. Um, I just wanted to let us know that on August the 8th we have a baptismal Sunday so if you are still thinking about that or if you are online and it's kind of uh, tugging at your heart please get in touch with us we'd love to have a conversation about that and this week we've got two youth um, hangouts happening for our youth and junior highs that's for grade six and up we're doing a hangout down at Robert Simpson Park on Tuesday night and then this coming Friday, we've got a movie night happening at the church. So if you're grade six and up, you're welcome to attend and you can contact myself for more information or details or what you're gonna wanna bring. Um, but I have a little object lesson I thought I would bring to you guys today. It's been a while. And so I thought, let's just dive right into it. So I found this here. Now, who can tell me what this is? Oh, maybe you can't see it. It's money, money, money. There you go. It's money, money, money. Now, you if you see this up close or if you just know this bill really well, you might know that this is not the real deal. This money is what we would call counterfeit. It is a fake. This is actually a napkin. I think this really classes up any, um, any outdoor picnic you're about to have. You know, you just make you feel really rich. Well, look at all that. Look at that. This is amazing, actually. So this is... <laughs> This is a counterfeit $100 bill. And actually, if I were to count up all of these, um, I would, I'd be in a good place right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800. But if I turn it around, there's no $100 bills printed on it. It's just blank. And it got me to thinking is that sometimes on the outside, we can really, really dress it up. And on the outside, we can make ourselves look all put together. But until you know what the real deal is, if you've got the real thing and you compare it, that's a better looking bill, isn't it? That is a better looking bill. That's not Monopoly money right there. And when you look at the real thing, you can say, wow, okay, you know what? It says it on both sides. There's a special clear spot and, and it's been printed properly so that not only does the look different, the feel is different, Somebody told me once these smell like maple syrup. I don't know if I believe them because I'm not smelling it, but I think they might smell different to some people. I don't know. But the other thing is, is that I heard is that they're printed with something like a fiber on the inside so that you can tell if it scans through a machine that it's not just paper. It's something different. It's like a, a polymer fiber that can tell you if it's a counterfeit. And I was thinking about our lives as Christians and we can dress up the outside and we can, uh, we can do all the right things, but it's God who sees our hearts and who sees the inside. And he knows the difference between real and counterfeit. And so I encourage you today to just open up your heart to say, God, would you change the inside of me so that not just the outside looks like I am I'm doing the real deal but the inside looks like it too like I am the real deal following you Lord and I've been changed from the inside out and if you're like wow that feels not really where I'm at today I want to encourage you that God takes counterfeit and he makes it real and so um, we can just be real in God's presence today and he can change us in first Samuel uh, 16 verse 7 it says that the Lord looks at the heart although man looks at the outward appearance God doesn't care about what you look like on the outside he looks at the heart so let's pray today and let's ask God to look at our hearts and change us as we worship him God we're just so grateful that you see us down to who we are on the inside and you say I love you you love us so deeply, Lord, beyond what we can comprehend. And so we set, aside an, uh, we set aside time in our day today to say thank you, Lord, for loving us so deeply. Thank you for seeing us so fully and choosing us to be your children. 
Today we choose you, Lord. Today we turn to you and we ask you to continue to change us. Help the things in our lives that have become counterfeit or fake. God, help us to be so real in your presence, real with the people around us, and that we could just demonstrate your real love to the world around us, God. So be glorified in our worship and have your way, Holy Spirit. We invite you into our presence as we worship you today. And all of God's people said, Amen. Let's worship everyone. Why don't we stand? If you can, if you're not in fear of being blown away. I would be hopeless. I would be hopeless without your goodness. I would be desperate without your love. Slave to the darkness. If it wasn't for the cross, but you have won me. With your kindness, chase me down when I was lost. Where would I be if it wasn't for the cross? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Hallelujah for the cross. And all my shame, and all my shame was met with mercy. Now your mercy be my song. Oh, the glory. Oh, the power of the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. Now I'm not. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Hallelujah. For the cross. By your stripes, by your stripes I'm healed. By your death I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. It is done. By your stripes I'm healed. By your death I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. It is done. By your stripes I'm healed. By your death I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. It is done. By your stripes I'm healed. By your death I live. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner, now I'm not. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Hallelujah for the cross. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner. my freedom hallelujah for the cross
cloud Kings and kingdoms will bow down and Every chain will break Broken heart declares praise For who can stop the Lord Almighty Our God is the Lion The Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before. Way before the King of Kings, the God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles every knee will bow before him our god is the lamb the lamb that was slain for the sin of the world his blood breaks the chain every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb oh every knee will bow Stop the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring. Our battles, every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. For oh, every knee will bow before Him. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe Live for you Jesus Jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart And lead me in your love to those around me Sing worthy of every song Worthy of every song could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring 
worthy of every breath we could ever breathe and live for you Jesus Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever it as we draw nearer to you. As we draw nearer to you in our everyday lives, that you would be putting in our hearts and in our minds the faces and names of people who we know that we should be reaching out to, that we should be loving, that we should be extending your grace to you give us compassion 
for those who don't yet know you or for those who have chosen to reject you. The lives that we build will be upon the rock that is Jesus Christ. And that our Christian witness before our neighbors, before our community, before our co-workers would be one of be one of love and compassion. It'll be one that's drastically different from everything else that our world is known for, that our society is known for. So that in the coming season, in the coming time, we'd be able to see the lives of men, women, and children from all over our community, from all sorts of backgrounds, from all sorts of um, socioeconomic levels, that we'd see them coming to know you and recognize you and confess you with their lips and bowing their hearts before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, it is Jesus Christ. Can you say amen to that this morning, church? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. morning it's me again this is the funniest transition that I could imagine like just from one mic to the other but anyway um, this morning I uh, realized too late that my iPad app was not working and so I'm just going off memory I'm trying this new thing where um, yeah anyway we'll see uh, <laughs> If you're new with us, if you have no idea who I am and you're wondering, like, what is he going on about? My name is Yeshua. I'm the worship pastor here at Glad Tidings, and it's just such a pleasure to have you join us, whether here in person or online. Um, and as Pastor Clark is away, both Rachel and I, as well as some other, uh, we've had some opportunity to teach and to preach from, from here, and uh, we're just praying that God is richly blessing and rejuvenating Pastor Clark as he, uh, as they're away this week, I believe again, and uh, they'll be back in August to, to lead us into the next ministry year. Um, but this morning, I want to talk to you about two things that are not new to anybody. I was talking to somebody before service, um, and I said, it's just light and fluffy. And, and I mean, now, since then, I've discovered I don't have my notes, so we'll see how light and fluffy it is. But um, God willing, it stays that way. So I, I want to begin with, um, uh, actually last, last Monday, I believe it was, um, we got the green light uh, to join this soccer league in Ottawa, and so I was super pumped. I'm registered, and I'm ready to go. And I know, I know a lot of people here don't necessarily like sports analogies, but just stick with me, okay? So... Here I was, I showed up right on time. I, I showed up just in time to do like a teeny bit of a warm up, but not really. I didn't warm myself up enough. I was not ready, but we had to, we had to field a team and I was there. And so I was playing defense and the whistle blows, we start. And probably within the first two minutes, the ball went overhead and I had to sprint back chasing the forward. I know, just stick with me, okay? Just stick with me. The first sprint of the game, I, like, we were going, it was maybe a 30-yard run, 
and I felt it at some point from here, just like a Velcro strip. <laughs> and then we pulled up, and I, like, I was like, oh, okay, okay. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. I eventually, I hobbled back to my position. I told my partner, you know, um, hey, if, if there's another sprint, you're going to have to take care of it because I'm here with an injury. There's two guys on the sideline still warming up. Um, and so I hobbled through for the first half. And at some point in, the, in, the, in that same half, another ball came through, and I was, I was like hobbling. I, I just knew that I couldn't. And in fact, at the end of that run, I started feeling it in my left, in my left thigh. And I was like, I'm done. I'm out. Nope, this is not. I should have warmed up. I'm not that age anymore where I can just run on the field and be whatever. Um, and as I told people, I could see it in their faces. They're like, yeah, you're just making it up. Like, stop whining. And it, it was actually so bad that I sat on the bed and had to lift my leg on. Thankfully, I'm okay now. Like, it's, you know, it's still there. It's still nagging. But what does this, this analogy have to do with uh, what I want to talk about today? So many of us walk through the Christian life without really preparing ourselves every day, or we're not really ready. So we're, we're kind of doing life, we're rushing out the door, there's, you know, it's, it's sometimes we're lucky to get out the door with a clean outfit on, right? And let alone having had spent any time or any meaningful time in the Word. And so there's really two things that are not new to anybody that I want to share with you today, okay? One is read your Bible. Two is get in a discipleship group, okay? So if, if nothing else, if my memory fails me in my notes, I really needed them today, read your Bible, get in a discipleship group, okay? But so many of us spend just a little bit of time, if any, reading a passage of scripture or a devotional, which you'll find out my thoughts on devotionals in a minute. Um, and, and we're kind of rushing to do this because we know it's what good Christians are supposed to do. And then we go on with life. And as soon as we walk out the door, sometimes before we've walked out the door, there's already some sort of spiritual injury that's come at us or some sort of thing that is already coming to attack us, coming, because I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is an enemy that is looking to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's not passively there, just being like, well, we'll just wait until they fall into my trap. Like, no, he's actively looking to trip us up. He's actively looking to discourage us. He's actively looking to take away all that the Lord has given us. And so we're, we're doing life and we're doing our best and we're probably likely getting some sort of injury along the way. But we try to hobble through while well, we have no choice, right? You got to finish your work day. You got to come home and deal with your family or not deal with them, but like take care of your family and you've got to, you've got kids to raise. You've got grand, uh, grandkids to help raise or something's going on. And, and so we're, we're doing that, but we don't really have time or make time, should I say. We don't really make time to heal those injuries. And so then what, what happens? You go to bed, and then you wake up. And it happens again. And you do it again tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And there's so many Christians, there's so many believers, there's so many people in the church who are walking around battered and bruised. And the, the, the terrible thing, I'm looking out at you and I love you. But some, some of us are at the age now where we don't remember what it's like not to have an ache or a pain. Right? You, so, some of you aren't laughing because you know it's true. But we've, we've just lived this way so long that we don't remember what it's like to live without it. And so the first thing I want to encourage you to do is open up this book 
and spend meaningful time with it. And so what we do, what we tend to do, I'm going to switch to analogy number two here. What we tend to do is we tend to see our time in the Word as a checking account. Right? Like, so we go, we sit down, we get what we need, and we're off. We get what we need. We get some sort of practical little tidbit of application that we can go away with or a, a devotional that somebody's written, like some sort of commentary or whatever that somebody's written. And that's enough to fuel us for the day. That's what we need for the day. And so, hey, if I can get that in, then I'm going to go. But what we need to be doing is looking at our or considering our time in Scripture more like a savings account where you invest time, where you invest into larger portions of Scripture, and maybe, like you're, perhaps you're, um, you're reading in like Matthew or something, or one of the Gospels, right? We'll keep it easy. You're reading in one of the Gospels, and you get to the end of the chapter, and you think, there wasn't really anything there for me to take away with me in this very moment. There's not really anything in Matthew chapter 3 that's going to help me with my um, screaming baby or with the grandchild that has woken me up that we love so much. But There's nothing in Matthew chapter 3 that's really going to help me with my divorce or with my anxiety about COVID or health or finances or, or whatever. But we invest our time and we trust that God is going to yield a reward on that that is so much greater than what we could imagine. And so over, because what ends up happening is when we're in these seasons, when we're in these seasons of struggle and strife and difficulty What's the last thing you go to generally? What's the most daunting thing to do when you're in the middle of it? Let's open up your Bible. Like we, we pray like, God help me, but that's about it. Tell me if I'm wrong, please. And so... What, what, we're, what we're doing, and, and look, this, this sort of checking account mentality, at least you're spending time in the Word. Some are going to say, well, the, the, you know, these are all the applicational bits that I need for today, for right now. That's true, but there's, that's only going to take you so far, right? There are entire portions of Scripture that you're going to miss out on. There's entire images of the Bible and of God that he wants to show you through these portions that can only be grasped and understood at a minute level when we're investing in long-term time in Scripture. So I was going to use this example of Jeremiah 37. Just cause I, I, I was going through my notes last night and I thought, there's a random passage. Jeremiah 37. When was the last time you read that? Anybody? And, and, and then I, you know, in my going over my notes, I was going to tell the story of what's happening in Jeremiah. And then I thought, really, though, I could tell the narrative. But unless you've been there, unless that passage is spoken to you, unless that's kind of in your guts, I don't know that it would really make sense anyway. For the record, it's, um, you know, when he's in the cistern. He's telling truth to power. The king doesn't like it. They throw him. They threaten to kill him. They throw him in the, uh, the cistern. And then it takes a Gentile to say, oh, maybe we shouldn't kill him. He's the man of God. Take him out. Read it. It's a great passage. But again, like, we're, unless, unless we're spending time in the Word over and over and understanding that God is the one that's going to do the work of illumination that God is going to yield a reward even if there's nothing in Jeremiah 37 for me or nothing in Matthew 3 for me today, right now, that's going to help me. That's, what, that's the kind of mentality that I want us to have, that I want to encourage us as believers to have. We need to know our sacred text more than just 
taking what we can from it in order to get me through the day. And that's a great way, like spending time in scripture is going to help heal our wounds. It's going to help heal our spiritual injury. It's going to help us rehabilitate. And if we continue to do it over the long haul, it's going to strengthen us as we continue forward. We're going to go from being these battered and bruised Christians who are unsure what to do to being strong and mature Christians who are walking in faith, who have the courage to say like Paul, or, or who have the yeah, who have the courage to say like Paul and Timothy and a lot of the other New Testament believers that they're worthy to be held in chains for the sake of the gospel. Like, I'm I am currently scared to 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 pray, God. I want to be worthy to be in chains for your gospel. It's a scary. It's a scary concept. But if we're in relationship with the Lord, if we're in the Word, then that's what's feeding us. That's what's strengthening us. That's what's giving us the, the impetus, the fuel, the everything we need in order to go forward. So, spend time in the Word. Number two, join a discipleship group. And that sounds super official, but, but really just find a brother, find a sister to talk about the Bible with. Talk about what you are studying. Talk about what you're reading. The Bible, the book of Proverbs tells us that iron sharpens iron. We get together to encourage one another. And sometimes, as in, that, um, as in that passage, there's going to be friction. And in fact, you probably can't get sharper unless there's friction. Unless there's some sort of disagreement, not to tear us apart, but to make us sharper, to make us better. So, so I promised myself at one point in my early 20s that I'd never be one of those Christians who was like, well, back in my day, we were the, you know. And I caught myself like a number of times since moving here to Armprior saying, yeah, well, when I was younger, I had this season in my life where we just had these, these awesome times of Bible fellowship. We used to get together and pray and we used to read the Bible together. And after about two or three times, actually every time, but after a number of times, the Spirit convicted me, saying like, well, stop being one of those people who just says, back in my day, and do something about it. Stop waiting for the church to officially open up a discipleship um, ministry that's good enough for you, and just do something. So eventually, I got the courage to ask these five guys to to start getting together and reading scripture and studying the Bible together. And I'm going to tell you something. There's only one of them here. But at first it was awkward. At first it was, well, throughout the whole thing, I never knew how to start it. Like, we got together, we chatted a little bit, and I was like, well, I guess we'll start now, awkwardly in my, you know, way. Um, but, but we went from being just five guys who were walking through the book of Proverbs to talking about more real and heavier things that involved our lives to being kind of this, this group of, of, of um, well, I'll just say we haven't officially said this, but like they're kind of my band of brothers currently. And I'm really excited to begin again in the fall. I've actually missed them this summer since we broke, uh, since we stopped for the summer. I've missed gathering together to pray and read scripture together. 
and I'm really excited to not only, not only spend time with them, but now to spend time with their families and to see as God is working in their families, how God is using these men to be good fathers, to be good spiritual leaders in their home, to invest in their children, to invest in their future relationships, to invest in all these things. And we went from being just five individual guys who love the Lord, who want to read the Bible together, to actually being um, this thing called a faith community. I think you might have heard of it. And so, church, I'm assuming here that the majority of us are Christians, the majority of us here. I just want to encourage you to spend time in the Word and to talk to other like-minded believers about it. To grow together. I was... I was looking for all the messages or all the verses that might um, that in the New Testament that might say like encourage the believers and really if you flip to the final greetings of every single pastoral letter in the New Testament it's encourage the believers teach the Word of God and encourage the believers teach the Word of God and encourage the believers Paul Peter John all of the New Testament writers are saying hey Read the Bible and get together to encourage one another, to build one another up, to pray for one another. And so like I, like I said, none of this is new. None of this is new. And I know for a fact that there are women's groups already doing this, that there's our men's group and there's per perhaps more than our men's group doing this. But what I really, really want to kind of get through to us today is if nothing else, don't wait for the front office of the church to make an official ministry out of this. It's going to be awkward to walk over to another man. I'm speaking to men specifically because I know this is tougher for us. It's going to be awkward to walk over to another man and say, hey, do you want to read the Bible together? Hey, do you want to pray together? It's going to be even more awkward when we've been walking with the Lord for 20, 30, 40 plus years and you're like, I don't even know where to start. But I want to encourage you to do this. This is incredibly important for the sake of your own life, for your marriage, for your family, for your children, for your children's children. If you don't know where to start, I, I would recommend, if you're a believer and you don't know where to start to read the Bible, I would just recommend beginning at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, you may know it as the longest psalm in the Bible, but it's this beautiful acrostic poem. I don't know if you remember that from primary school. But it's this beautiful acrostic poem all about the Bible, all about the Word of God, all about the laws of God and how the author can't even sleep because he's so giddy thinking about it. Like I, I, I'm lying in my bed awake meditating on your word. Just start there. Read a stanza and pray through it. And then get together with somebody and say, hey, how did that hit you? Four verses. How did this hit you? What about the next four? And I was reading this at, uh, at OVPC yesterday, this, yesterday morning. I was reading By the Lake. And I didn't get past verse 12, I don't think. Because I was already convicted and I was already praying. And I was like, man, I just want to live better for the Lord. And so this isn't, you know, I, I really want you to hear this as, as like a loving encouragement. Light and fluffy, right? But... I, I can't say this enough. I feel like I'm just rambling now. Spend time in the word, brother, sister. And get together with other believers to talk about it. And not just talk about it, but act on it. Keep each other accountable. 
That's, that's likely where the friction is going to come, actually. I messed those parts up in my memory. In fact, why don't we open up Psalm 119? And I'll just close by reading the first eight verses. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Verse 1 says, Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey his laws and search for him with all their hearts. They do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. You have charged us to keep your commandments carefully. Oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. Then I will not be ashamed when I compare my life with your commands. As I learn your righteous regulations, I will thank you by living as I should. I will obey your decrees. Please don't give up on me. That's the first poem. They hit me like a ton of bricks yesterday. I will thank you by living as I should. There's a great place to start, brother, sister, if you're unsure of where to begin. If you're not a Christian and you don't know anything about the Bible and you're like, yeah, maybe don't start there. Maybe start in the book of John or start with one of the Gospels. Feel free to reach out to us via email or on social media if you're, an, if you're a new believer you want more resources or conversation. But, like, really, I'm speaking, I know that I'm speaking major, um majorly to a group of people who's been here for a long time. So instead of even today, instead of talking about your fishing exploits or the new thing you're building or some hockey team that hasn't made the playoffs since who knows when, and they probably won't, Let's talk about the Bible. Let's talk about something that's going to fuel us and build us up. Let's pray. Holy Father, we just thank you for the opportunity that we have to gather in this place. We thank you for the hope we have in you. We thank you that wherever it was that we were, you found us, you rescued us, and you've saved us. You've called us to be your disciples. You've called us to, you've charged us with living your commands now, now that we're your children. And so we just pray. We pray that your Holy Spirit would convict us when we choose to distract ourselves with any number of other things. We choose that your Holy Spirit, we, we, we pray that your Spirit would convict us when we choose to fill our lives, to feed ourselves with other things. That you would be gently and lovingly reminding us of our need for you. And that you'd give us the courage and strength to gather with other fellow believers. To build each other up. To pray for one another. To carry one another's burdens. To confess our sins to one another. That we'd be a church marked by discipleship. That we would be... Yes, that we'd build one another up. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Well, I think that is like kudos. Thank you for a practical message. Just no notes. I don't know if I could have done it. So well done. <laughs> um, you know, there were so many times where you mentioned Mat Matthew chapter 3 that I wasn't sure if that was the Lord speaking to me directly or if that was for all of us. And we all just need to turn to Matthew chapter 3 because you kept saying, well, it might not have something for you today, but it'll have something for you in the future. And so I, I had it open over there and I was, I was looking at it and I thought, God, what is it that you want to say to us? And it's when John the Baptist is preparing the way of Jesus and baptizing people in the river. And I just want to read this verse as we, as we come to close our service off. In verse 2 of Matthew chapter 3, it says, Heaven's kingdom is about to appear, so you'd better keep turning away from evil and turn back to God. Isaiah was referring to John when he prophesied this. A thunderous voice, one will be crying out in the wilderness, prepare yourself for the Lord's coming and level a straight path inside your hearts for him. And I just think that this has been such a reminder of us leveling the path in our heart for God to speak. And then you're just opening that opportunity for those around you to also hear God's voice speak. So, um, yeah, Lord, I, ooh, I just... I just want to be sensitive to the spirit. I don't want us to go home today and think, okay, now that's on my to-do list to do. I want to give the opportunity for that to happen here. If you're here with a need, if you're sitting here saying, I need my community of believers today. I can't wait until tomorrow. I came today and I need my community. Um, COVID doesn't stop prayer. If you need prayer today, you can pray at your seat, you can raise a hand, and I know there's people around you that want to pray with you, but you can come up here and pray too. But I want to just open up the opportunity that we are still the church, and we still do what God has asked the church to do. And God is still moving and healing and changing. And so um, let's do that right now in community, right? Like theology and learning about God is best done in community. And this is where it happens. And this is the starting place of that. So I know that we're gonna have a little bit of music. And if you, if you wanna pray with your spouse or who you came with or your son or your daughter to open up this time and even pray as a family, maybe there's something, maybe it was really hard to get here this morning. And maybe you need to say, hey, I'm sorry I yelled at you on our way to church today. Let's just pray together. Or maybe it's, it, I don't know who you came with and maybe you're sitting alone, but if you're saying, I would like to pray or I need prayer, just slip up a hand and let's just take a moment to pray with each other. If you want to come up, I'll pray with you. But let's not pass up an opportunity to grow closer together as believers and strengthen each other and sharpen each other. Because it starts here and then we go out, right? Let's start it here. So let's let's pray. Go ahead. Like bow your head if it's personal, that's fine. You can keep it personal. to take a moment and pray specifically for those who were in need of physical healing. And so if you are someone who needs physical healing or you know someone who is battling something physically, let's let's stand for them. So if you if you if it's yourself or it's someone you know that just says I need God to touch my body right now. I just ask that you would stand. And if you're not one standing or if if you're standing for someone else, you can reach out your hand towards that person. Because we know that God's power can move. God, you know the pain and the suffering of your people. God, you know the hurts and the pain that people are dealing with each and every day. The diagnosis. The struggles. But you are Yahweh God. You are Jehovah. You are provider God. And you are the God who heals. 
And just as the woman reached out to Jesus and touched his robe, God, we are reaching out to your robe right now and we are asking for healing, Lord. We are asking, God, that you would come and you would make a way in circumstances and in places that there seems to be no way, where there seems to be no hope. Lord, I ask that you would move and that your spirit would heal in your mighty name, Jesus. And it's not by our power or by our words that we can heal, but it's through prayer and it's through your power, God. And so we ask for your power to be unleashed and that your healing would come and that people would be touched physically by your presence and they would be changed. We don't understand why some people get healed and some people don't, but God, it doesn't change the fact that we cry out to you as a people and ask for your healing touch. Go ahead and cry out to God in your own words. Let's just call on the name of the Father and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, would you heal? Would you come, Holy Spirit? Would you heal? And just name those people that need it. Maybe it is yourself. We come against cancer. God, we pray for those we know that are struggling with cancer. God, we pray for those that are struggling with things of the heart, that are dealing with heart um, issues and diseases. Lord, we ask that you would touch their hearts in the physical, that you would, you would restore tissue. God, we pray for uh, problems with breathing and the lungs and those that are struggling even with COVID right now, God. Anything with the airways, God, I ask for your healing touch. God, we pray for things like arthritis and joint pain and knees and hips and backs that are aching. God, we ask for your touch. We're just praying, God, that you would move. We ask for your spirit. If you know someone that's dealing with something emotional or there's some mental health struggle, that's no less important. And I think we need to pray for those that are struggling um, with something emotionally, relationally. It doesn't have to be manifested in the physical to really affect the physical. And so let's pray and lift those up that are struggling maybe with anxiety or depression. God, that you would move, that you would reach into that pit of despair. That you would be the light in the darkness. And as the light illuminates the darkness, there cannot be darkness in your midst. God, we ask for your supernatural touch. I pray for families that are dealing with loss of children because they've lost someone to depression or to suicide. God, I ask for your healing. God, I just, I ask that you would keep our young people safe, God. Just cover their hearts. Put blinders on their eyes and show them their, their true identity in you. God, I pray for hopelessness in single-parent homes. God, I pray for strength for single parents right now, God. I so appreciate that Yeshua said sometimes it's awkward in a small group because it can be awkward when you don't really know where the Spirit is leading, but think, let's just continue to press in to where is the Spirit leading. What is it that we would pray for next, or what is it that, that you need prayer for or that God is speaking to? Yeah, there's an enemy of our souls. And there is an enemy that is prowling and taking too many with him. And we come against the enemy, Lord. I just, I just ask for you to move. That you would cast out the darkness in our homes and in our schools. God, I think of 
I think of every child that has been at home through this season. And some homes are not safe and healthy spaces. And God, I ask for your light to flood in and that there would be hope restored. That you would allow your young people to dream again in places where dreams have been snatched. I pray for people who are struggling with the crippling reality of financial struggle. God, that you would bring them freedom as they, as they can trust in you and that you bring provision. God, we come to your well and we drink deeply this morning and we ask for your living water to just flow in our lives. Help us to bring that living water to others around us. God, I pray that this message would just impact us to, to move and connect with those around us, to connect this week and to make, make a priority out of studying your word and out of, of getting into a group and doing study in relationship with others. God, I pray that you'd be bringing to mind people right now who they need to reach out to. God, I thank you that you are just so faithful to move. You're so faithful to speak. You're so faithful to heal. I just praise you for your faithfulness, oh Lord. We are, we are just so grateful for this time we get to spend together. And God, I ask that you would be doing a good work in your people. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we can pray all this. Amen. Amen. Well, church, it has been a Sunday. I am not kicking you out. You can stick around. You can keep praying and you can uh, keep hanging out together. Um, I do want to make mention that uh, if, if online giving is your norm, then we encourage that and go for that. But if you're here today and you want to give um, in a physical way, we do have a basket at the back with some of the devotional and testimony magazines. So if you are prepared to do that on site, we have a way to make that happen. And God, I pray that you would just bless the offering we give you. God, that you would make it work and move and you just have a design and purpose for the money we give because it's all yours to begin with. And so we say thank you and amen to a great service together. So go in peace, everyone. Go in love. We love you lots, and we will see you back here next Sunday. <laughs>